Hey everyone, welcome. It is that time of the day where we want to give you some uplifting, inspirational tidbits from the Bible and some thoughts of the day. Also, to announce to you that EYYS is um, going to be happening in December the 16th and 17th, right in Atlanta, Georgia. If you haven't registered for End Your Year Strong, you should register now. This the this year's theme is the emergence, the rise of the next generation. And we have someone that's here, someone that I've been waiting to meet for a long time, and I get to meet him in person in another couple of weeks, Pastor Keon Henderson. Welcome, Pastor Henderson. It is an honor to be here with you. Um, you are amazing. You're an amazing woman of God, great preacher. Um, in our world, we every time we hear you preach, we say, man, she can kill it. So we just thank you for everything that you contribute to the kingdom. Yes, thank you so much. We're excited um, actually to host you in December at our Andrew Your Strong conference. It's a time when we get a chance to exhale from a year-long uh, track through life and uh, take a couple of days to refocus and reset our minds and our hearts to the next year. And um, you have been doing a work in Texas, five campuses, 15,000 members, and you're right in the thick of everything, not just doing a work in terms of the faith-based space, but you're also a great proponent of empowering your members and empowering individuals from around the world to think about ministry differently. And it's a kingdom perspective. I had an opportunity to listen to you, one of your messages and I felt so refreshed. My, my question to you is, what is your passion? Wow, you know, the thing that, you know, gets me up in the morning and the thing that makes me most excited is when I read something or study something, hand it to a parishioner or somebody who's affected by our ministry and to see them to actually win as a result of it. And that sounds corny, but my passion is to help people to continue in spite of the fatigue that life presents. Like I love to see people keep going. I, I love to see uh, people get hit, but not get knocked down. It, 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 invigorates me to no end to see a person who life tries to stop and then God uses me to give them the word to keep going. I, I, I would do it every day of my life, um, whether it happens one at a time or a hundred at a time or a thousand at a time, just to see people keep going and not give up is the thing that I live for. Yeah. So many people, you know, I think now are suffering from possibility blindness. They've lost their hmm. hope. And wow. I believe that one of the things that you do is put this defibrillator on people's faith and give them the mm -hmm. tools to at least run to the next, on the le next leg of their journey. And I think that's important. Um, I'm thinking about the new normal and what you just said, helping people to win. How can we begin to think about this new normal and then navigate it so that we're winning as Christians. Yeah, I think that it's important uh, for people who are leaders, right? Pastors, um, businessmen and women, you know, those of us who are put in position to help people see the next leg of the race. Um, I think it's important that we understand that winning doesn't look the same for everybody and mm -hmm. that, that we need to start asking questions about uh, you know, what does it look like to you to win and then and then reverse engineering the process and tailor making it for whether it be the individual, the generation, the ministry, because I knew I grew up in a time where our pastor's definition of win was the same for everybody. You know, be sold out for Christ and, you know, pastors, you know, you, you couldn't be bivocational. Right. You had to preach and be thou faithful unto death. And yeah, that was good for my pastor. But it didn't fit me. And I think that in this new dispensation, uh, the, the path to victory is multifaceted and that we have to tailor make it 
uh, to those who are in the race. Now, obviously, with the tenants being, um, you know, definitely a stable of, you know, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, you know, Christ being our Lord and Savior and Jesus Christ and the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe that that has to be consist consistent. But I think that once you step out of those realms and, and you step into the world's plural system, uh, then I think that our approaches have to be multifaceted. They have to be flexible. Um, and there's this new idea, Dr. Trim, of, you know, doing things different. I don't think that the goal should be to do things different. I think the goal should be to do it how God gave it to you, which inevitably makes it different. Being you is what makes you different. Thinking the way you think is what makes you different. Uh, being bold if you're bold or being reserved if you're reserved. Whatever you are, that's what makes it different. And uh, I think your your theme is so apropos, the, the, uh, the emergence. There, there are so many things emerging uh, right now. There, there are so many rising right now. People from sectors you would have never thought that you have millionaires uh, and, and multimillionaire social media influencers um, that, are, that are scaling in life in their kitchens, you know, yeah. in their cars, in their living room. So this is a different generation. Uh, it's a it's the same race, uh, but it's a different leg of the race. And, and I think that uh, like what you're doing, um, you know, I've seen you. Um, I've seen you change. I've seen you matriculate. I've seen you rebrand. I've seen you emerge. And uh, that's that's why all of us will be convening uh, at the meeting you're hosting, because uh, you're speaking the language of today's times. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was reading um, from out of the book of Matthew, as in the days of Noah. Mm. And a lot of people think of his days as just days of debauchery where they were eating and drinking. But I see something differently. I see that Noah's days were days of innovation. Mm. And these are the days that we're living in days where we're emerging, where we're innovating, where we're branding, where we're rebranding, and we have to, in order to keep up with the changing times. How can the church posture themselves to take advantage of the new normal? Well, you know, you just said something about Noah. Literally, at the time of this interview, I am three days away from preaching a message about Noah that I prepared this week. So wow. the Bible talks about Noah in the book of Genesis. And we know that God had, you talk about innovation. Well, what is innovation? Innovation is the thing that I create for the thing that doesn't exist because the boat came before the rain. So he's innovative. And when you're innovative, everybody's looking at you like you're crazy because they don't know where what you have fits. They don't know where it fits yet. And when people don't know where it fits uh, and you're ahead of your time, then they call you all kinds of names because people always prototype what they can't ex understand. So they don't understand Noah. Now, but the Bible says in first Peter chapter three, that God went to the prisons, the deepest parts of prison and spoke to the souls that were disobedient in the days of Noah. So this is what I love about God because the devil would have thought, you know what? Hey, I, I got in that garden and he would like to think that him sneaking in that garden was the reason why God repented that he made man. He, he would like to think that he destroyed uh, the momentum of God. But what he doesn't know is that God had a backup plan. The backup mm -hmm. plan was that he would go into the prisons. Hail, if you will. Some say Hades. It's one of the most uh, conflicting portions of scripture uh, as, as to actually where God went. But here's the premise. The flood didn't stop him from going back in the personality of Jesus Christ and redeeming the souls that were disobedient from the boat. And this is the great thing about the gospel. This is the great thing about the gospel, that no matter uh, what what uh, denomination we grew up in, no matter uh, what our pastors taught us or didn't teach us, right? No matter uh, what tragedies we have seen before the Christian church, thing is, is at the end of it, we always win. Yes, <laughs> it, yes. You, you, you would think that it was over. And here God goes to hell and says to all of the souls, listen, if you thought that flood was it, if you thought that boat was it, I've got another plan. And, and guess what I thought was amazing, Dr. Trim? Well, I thought well, well. it was amazing that he says this to in the days of Noah. He meets Noah and, and the discussion about Noah as a boat. 
And then the, the counter argument to the scripture in Genesis is in first Peter, which is written by the apostle. And where does he meet him in a boat? So it's amazing <laughs> that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows that yes. that's why he's the Alpha and the Omega. So uh, I, I, want, I want to say to your audience, what does winning look like? It changes. But what is the truth? You always do. You will always win. If, if you are a child of God, this thing always ends in well done. And here's the word of the Lord. If it ain't well, it's because God ain't done. That's the bottom come line. On, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, I'm, I'm excited because Noah happens to be one of my favorite. And now I have people ask me all the time, well, who's your favorite personality in the Bible? Usually it's mm -hmm. the one that I'm studying right now. It's Noah because his days were similar to ours. But you raised three specific important elements. The prophetic. Mm -hmm. The prophetic actually takes you into realms of risk. And another yes. word, risk is faith. That's number one. Um, whenever you move by faith, you run the risk of being rejected because people, people are comfortable with the familiar, but familiar is a realm where your dreams go to die. That's number one. Number two, you mentioned the challenge and then you mentioned the opportunity. Um, I wanna just um, jump into another discussion with you. How can the church take advantage of the opportunity as well as face the challenges? It's a two part. I, I think that the church needs to recognize that the obstacle is the opportunity. They're not different. They're actually the same. They're the same. There's a story about a man uh, who uh, was the president over a small town and a big rock he put it, used a crane, put the big rock in the middle of the town. It's a one road town, Dr. Trim. One way in, one way out. Okay? Underneath the rock, before he placed it in, in this position, he put $5 million underneath the rock. Okay? So now this big rock is in the middle of this town, one way in, one way out, and everybody is trying to escape, but they get to the rock and see that it's bigger than any rock they've ever seen. So they turn around and went back the other way. Every person did this except for one man. One man got to the rock and he put his hands on the rock and he pushed it with all of his might and somehow the rock moves. And when the rock moves, he sees a bag. And in the bag, there's the $5 million. And the moral of the story is, if you have the guts to push the obstacle, you will find the opportunity. Most people will never get the opportunity is because every time they see the obstacle, they go the opposite direction. But mm -hmm. the obstacle is the opportunity. And so we've got to teach church people. And this is how the church positions people to win. We've got to be telling our people in our, uh, in our seats. No, the Bible says it was good that I was afflicted, that I might see the statues of God. Embracing the pain and knowing that the stretching is a part of the process, knowing that without the fiery furnace, your your ropes never get burned off, knowing without the lion, you don't recognize that God is the king of the jungle. It is the thing that you're going through that shows you the God who can bring you through so you can find out what he put in you, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Every obstacle you will ever face in your life is an opportunity for God to show you who he is, not who he was, who he is in spite of what you're dealing with. I love obstacles because every obstacle has an opportunity Velcro to it. And, and so, so the Bible gives us these, these things like be not weary and well-doing or no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So if we know that by faith and we know we always win, then it is our job uh, as kingdom leaders to show people, no, no, it's the direction you should be going in. Don't run away from it. If Jesus had run away from the cross, where would you and I be? 
Salvation is in the direction of the cross, not in the opposite direction. And everything that Jesus did for three years led him to the obstacle, not away from him. Yes, this is so fantastic. Those of you that have not registered registered for End Your Year Strong, you need to do it right now. Don't even wait to the end of the day. Go to endyouryearstrong.com and register. Pastor Keon Henderson is going to be with us there. Our theme is Emerging the Rise of the Next Generation. And talking about the next generation, what do you feel that God is up to with this emerging generation? Yeah, I, you know, some time ago I had the absolute privilege of sitting next to um, uh, uh, Dr. Bishop Marvin Winans at a, at a conference. And somebody asked us this question. He represented one generation. I represented the other. We were in Atlanta, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and I were in the back. And he saw the LED screen. This was a, several years ago. This is when everybody started buying LED screens. And he said, y'all got one of those in your church? I said, yes, sir. He said, how much did it cost? And I told him, he said, ain't no way in the world. He said, now this was five, six, seven years ago. He said, ain't no way in the world I would pay all of that money for an LED screen. I said, Pastor Marvin, I said, um, how much money did you pay for that video when you and your siblings made the video with Michael Jackson? He told me the number. I looked at him and I said, ain't nowhere in the world. Ain't nowhere in the world nobody in my generation <laughs> would pay that amount of money to shoot a video. I said, y'all, we, we would have shot the same video with on, this phone yep. right here. On yes, the and, and, it, and it would have been. So, so, so the question um, mm -hmm. about that generational divide, right? About what it looks like to win and how do we scale and how do we get the church uh, to keep up with that? I think that we have to understand the, that we should have the anointing of the sons of Issachar and understand the times. And that we, it, it's, that we shouldn't be measuring uh, 2022 up against 72. Mm -hmm. That that we have to that we have to live in today, mm -hmm. see what today is, see it through the lens of the people who will hold the torch in the future and make the plan accordingly. Because if we schedule the plan based off of those who taught us, then we will have a plan that will get us the results of the people who foresaw what they foresaw, but didn't have the experience that you and I have. And before we get to the antidote, it would already be expired. That is so, we've so got to, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. So we've got to, I've got to listen. I've got people on our staff, Dr. Trim, that are in their twenties. Because mm -hmm. if I don't have people on our staff that are in their twenties, I'm going to create something that will, that I probably won't finish until I'm in my fifties which by the time it matures, it'll be ready for somebody in its 60s in the hand of somebody who's in their 30s. Yeah. And what does a 30-year-old do with something that's good for a 60-year-old? They call it an heirloom and they put it in storage. So they yes, will they store do. the solution and still have a problem. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're introducing something else, you know. What is the greatest challenges? for this emerging generation? I think, I think the greatest just, challenge- You for just gave first. one, you just gave one. Mm -hmm. But what, actually let's, let's hold that as a cliffhanger. Okay. Um, because we're gonna be unpacking this. Um, I do my State of Our Union address uh, where we look at where we are and then where we should be over the next 20 years or so mm -hmm. and what we should be preparing ourselves for uh, when the Lord called me, actually, my mindset and my paradigm is government and business. That's my paradigm. And I always tell people, look, I'm probably not the best one that God should have selected to preach because I'm not the typical preacher um, at all. And I feel as if when we talk about emergence, a lot of people think of age. I don't think of age. I think of paradigm those that are tapping mm. into the next, whether you are 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 or 60. Um, you see the prophetic word did not come to pass for 
Abraham until he was uh, 90 years old or almost 100 years old. He was in what we call his um, golden years. And I think that when we look at scriptures, we can't limit God to a physical age. Um, it should be one where all of us now are tapping into the next and we all can be used irrespective of our age, irrespective of um, where we came from. New is new. And um, God is doing a new thing. This is in, I, I tell you, I'm happy that I was born in this generation during this time. Um, there's some things that we're going to be speaking about unloading. But what can people expect from you and why should they attend and do your strong? Um, you know, I believe, number one, they should attend because you've put on and I use business terms, an amazing product, right? You you have mental health covered, you have the spiritual covered, you have the business covered. And this is why I say you're emerging because your conference now becomes this smorgasbord uh, where a person doesn't just come and shout, but they leave empowered. So I think that that's why people should absolutely register right now. Um, yes, yes. The reason why is you should always be a part of any movement that gets you to restart your year before the year restarts. I yeah, I, you know, I often say how something ends is how it begins. Yeah. So, it you know, perfect. you should be, yeah, you should be prophetic. You should, you know, be running into the new year. A lot of people wait until January 1 or the 5th to start a fast to prepare for the new year. It's already late. You've already lost time. Time is a commodity that you can never, ever gain back. And um, we want to give you the tools that you need, not just to make this a great year, to make it a great decade. Yeah. And I believe that the emerging saints is going to be a superpower um, group of individuals. It's uh, the emergence of a, a, a new... Um, a, a new type of Christians, a new type of believers. Where we're moving by faith. We're not moving by fear. We're not afraid of going to hell because we know we're going to heaven. We're heaven minded. We're not trying to eliminate debt. We're trying to create wealth. We're not trying to get from the bottom. We're just living on the top. We're dominating. We're leading. We're lights. We're we're bringing the solutions to the table. This, this new emergence of believers, I call them the superpower Christians, because um, one of the reasons why we're superpower, we, we no longer see a dichotomy, a dichotomy between Sunday and Monday and Friday. Uh, everything is worship. Whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. And we're unapologetic about it. And is a new species of believers that are arising and you represent one of those new species. Um, and one of the reasons why we chose you is because you're demonstrating what you're preaching. You're not preaching one thing and living another. You're actually manifesting the word even in your own life, not just your ministry. You are um, bivocational like Paul. Paul was able to say, look, I'm teaching you the law of giving and receiving, but if you don't give, it's okay. I don't have to live off of your offering. Why? Because I have a construction company. And, you know, we're finding more and more um, the relevance and practicality of Christianity. For, for everyone that's listening, Christianity to me is my life strategy. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. And um, once I say that, people begin to get it. Because a strategy is attached to an outcome, a vision an aspiration, a dream, or a goal. And we don't have to compromise our Christian or Christian belief or Christian core values or a Christian lifestyle in order for God to bless us. In fact, um, I believe that we're beginning to understand what Christianity really is. Cr to be a Christian, Christian is not a noun, it's, it's, a, it's a verb, it's an adjective. 
it's an adjective. Christian describes something that you are as a descriptive word. It means that you're Christ-like. And so Christ-like in creativity, innovation, and in leadership, in morality, in ethics, um, in servant leadership, visionary leadership, to me, that's what Christianity is all about. And right now the world is at a point, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, where they don't care where the solution comes from, um, just as long as there are solutions to the table. And I believe that in this prophetic moment, like Noah, in this prophetic moment, rather than getting swept away by the currents of change, we can ride the waves into the next. Absolutely. Now you were talking about running um, uh, out of a year. Um, and I think that that's what most people are. They are running out of the previous year instead of running into the new year. And mm -hmm. uh, if you wait until January 1st to start your year over, you're already behind. Um, yes. You know, I grew up in Gary, Indiana, and uh, it was cold in the wintertime. And we had to start our car up before we left because the car had to get warm because it was so cold. And you could never get in the car and just drive off. Um, and so when you when you have cold starts, um, you never have warm finishes. And so I think that you have to get come ready. On, you have to on. get ready to go. Say, say get ready. that again. Yeah, when you have cold starts, it's difficult to have warm or hot finishes. You got you got to get going. You you gotta you gotta you gotta get some momentum. You gotta start uh running towards the mark, you know, not just pressing, but you gotta run towards that mark for the prize. The prize is given to the persistent. The, you know, the people are always trying to figure out how is this person successful or how how is Dr. Trim successful or uh, if they perceive me to be. Uh, it's not that uh, we are any better than them, but I can tell you what you and I did do that some didn't. And that's never give up. Yeah, we woke up every morning. We put our hand to the plow and we didn't look back. And if our hands were bleeding, we kept our hands on the plow. And if we felt overwhelmed, we drunk all of the water from the water hose. And if we felt underwhelmed, we prayed in the spirit and fired ourselves up. We read books. We went to conferences like this. We registered. You and I, at the stage we are in ministry now, still registering for events and still yes. reading books and still going to meetings to invigorate ourselves. So if anybody's watching and you feel you don't need this, then you're going to starve with a loaf of bread beneath your arm. Here you are talking about you're hungry. Here's a solution, and I'm telling you right now, you're sitting in front of a solution. Now, this is what I've learned. Most people don't succeed because God isn't providing. Most people don't succeed it's because they don't recognize providence. They, they don't Come know on. that it is the thing that God gave them. They'll walk right past the blessing. They'll walk right past the answer. You, you heard of that story about the man uh, who was in the water, treading water, and he was about to drown. And and the boat came, and he said, uh, the "I'm man waiting said, on God. I'm waiting on God." And when he died, he gets to heaven and says, "God, what happened?" He said, "I sent three people to get you. You were waiting on me because God always does a thing through a man or a woman. And he does everything the through a person. Solution is right in front of you. You know, you're bringing up another issue." And it's the issue of self-worth. Mm -hmm. If a person does not value or see their self-worth, they will never see themselves as investment worthy. They will nickel and dime their own destiny. They will nickel and dime their own life. And many of you that are listening will understand this. If something happened to your car, you will find the money, even if you didn't have the money, to fix that car because you have been subliminally trained to make your command, your 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 um, mechanic wealthy at your expense, but you have been subliminally trained to see others as investment worthy, but you have been also trained to nickel and dime yourself. Sometimes think of this, Dr. Trim. You know, you just made me think of something that we will always find the money to fix a thing but we always make excuses to find the money to fix ourselves. The when, question, it, when it comes time then, to fix us. Yes. Do yeah. you believe that you are investment worthy? Let me take it one step further. Do you have self-development and professional development? Do you have a line item in your budget for that, for this year and for next year? 
because I attend seminars. I invest heavily in myself because I believe that if I show up with my cup filled, I'm able to allow people to access the overflow. And that's what End Your Year Strong is all about, is getting your cup filled so that when you show up in life, you're not showing up empty. And secondly, most people will use your gifts at the expense of your greatness. And throughout the scriptures, you could see that happening. And what we want to do collectively is to pour into your greatness, to help you to see who you are, what you are bringing to the table, irrespective of whether you have a degree, whether you graduated from high school, whether you graduated from the school of hard knocks, whether you have um, a rap, a sheet, whether you've been a, a rap sheet, whether you've been to prison or not, it's inconsequential to this conversation. You are next in line. You are a part of this emerging generation that God is going to be using. You will probably be the first in your family to be a multimillionaire, to be a business owner, to be an entrepreneur, to do what God has placed in your spirit. And we want to equip you to do it. This year, and your year strong, is going to be, we were hosting it at the Omni. We have moved it to the Marriott Marquis, and uh, you can register right now. Also, we have two other parts of the and your year strong, along with these amazing lineup of preachers. Um, but we want you to register for the Partners Breakfast, as well as the Emerging Leading lun Leaders Luncheon. So when you go online, please register for the Emerging Leaders Luncheon. We're going to be downloading the tools that you need, um, talking about and talking to you about industries and where you should be hitching your um, your your horse to, where you should be, what you should be thinking about, where industry is going, and and how you can prophetically be ahead of the curve for every um, one job that is eliminated by AI and by robots and by droids, 1.5 jobs are going to be created. And so there's going to be, the issue is not going to be unemployability the, or joblessness. The issue is, are you going to be employable? And how can you become employable? So a lot of people are thinking about joblessness. That will never be an issue in the emerging generation. The issue is, will you be qualified for the emerging jobs that are guaranteed, uh, absolutely guaranteed to exist? And we want you to get the prophetic jump start into what you can expect over the next generation, the next 20, 30, 50 years. Um, and I always felt um, pastor, that if God could speak to Nebuchadnezzar and was unsaved and he was a heathen and give him prophetic insight into where the world would be thousands of years after his death, including every superpower, the superpower, Babylon, Medo-Persia, the Greeks, the Romans, Great Britain, straight down to the United States of America. If God could speak to him in millennials, God should be able to speak to each individual about their lifespan, whether it's 70 years, 80 years, 90 years. And when you come, we're going to be raising up um, prayer altars. The prophets are going to be speaking. Um, we're anticipating individual prophecies to those of you that are attending. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing conference again. Those of you that are joining us, that's December the 16th and 17th, andyouryearstrong.com. And I'm happy to welcome for the first time with us, Pastor Keon Henderson. He has a ministry in Texas. Those of you that are in the Texas area, please join him at any one of his campuses. He has five campuses. And then with modern technology, you might be around the world. And I recognize there are a lot of um, Christians that are not going to church, but they're tuning in online. So you can find him on online, YouTube, social media. You can connect with him. And in addition to that, he has a new book, Shift. 
And I'm interested because I wrote an entire message called Shift, the coming, this is, this is almost 30 years ago, I preached the message, the 40 shifts that will occur on the earth and every last one of them have occurred. So tell us about this book, where they can get the book and where they can connect to you on social media. Wow, that's amazing. I have to look that up. I, I wish I had have heard that message before I wrote the book. It probably would have been twice as good. But, um, you know, let me tell you why I wrote we the should, book. We, we really should do a shift conference together. We really that would should. Be amazing. That would be amazing. Let me, let me tell you why I wrote the book. I was 21 years old. And I was a senior in college. I went to college. I went to Purdue University at Fort Wayne on a basketball scholarship. And um, I was also pastoring a church while I was in college. The craziest thing. Okay, so I'm 21. I'm a senior in college. Um, a, a lady named Saloni Mayhill, uh, who was 72 years old at the time, told me the Lord told her that she wanted me to be her pastor and that she would go and get some of her family and friends to help start a church. I was in college. She kept her word. She gave me the address to her house. I went to her house and she had five of her friends in her living room, three on the couch, one in the chair, and she was sitting in her brown leather lazy boy. And um, I preached my first sermon in a room full of people all over the age of 72, between 72 and 86 years old uh, as a pastor and uh, started what was called, we, <laughs> Dr. Trim, we named the church in her living room and we named it the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church. Come on now. And, uh, and I'm passing this church at 21. They're all 72 and above. And I remember by the time I got to the end of that sermon, they were all asleep. And um, I thought that I had did a terrible job. And I called my pastor and I said, you know, I have my first service and everybody fell asleep. And he said, uh, well, tell me what you preached about. And I told him the name of the sermon. He said, it was a good message. I don't know why they fell asleep. He said, tell me about the people. And I told him they were all 72 and above. And he looked at me and he grabbed, He said, son, don't worry about that. Everybody was on medication and the side effects of medication is drowsiness. So it made me feel good about myself. Um, wow. We start the church. Our team is doing well. The church has grown now from five to 600 people. I'm still in college. I'm mm -hmm. still in college pastoring 600 people. And my coach came to me and he said, you're going to have to make a decision. Either you're going to continue to pastor this church or you're going to have a career in basketball. But there is no way you can have both because both of them are going to require everything that you have. And I remember looking at him in that hotel room on our way to Michigan State University. And I told him, I said, sir, I am going to choose the thing that makes the most sense. I've been preaching since I was 14 years old. I got baptized at the age of six. I love the Lord. The choice is easy. I'm playing basketball. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to play basketball and I'm going to wait to pastor a church and preach for the Lord once I get done playing basketball because I would have made enough money to buy the church myself. My exact words. That was at four o'clock in the afternoon. By eight o'clock that evening, I was on a stretcher. I had torn every ligament in my left knee. Wow. And that's when the Lord at that moment showed me that he will shift what you trust so that you will do what he planned. Come on again, say it again, say it again. You got to hear God this, guys. You got to hear this. Because I think you're you're touching so many people right now with that one statement. Yeah. You God will trust what you he will he will shift what you depend on so that you will do what he has called you to do. I was depending on my legs for basketball. He was depending on my mouth for the gospel. So he shifted what I wanted to use to get me to the place so he could use what he wanted to use. And I wrote the book. It was the shift in my knee that caused the shift in my mind. And God will shift the thing that you trust 
to get you in position so he can trust you. And now I'm doing what I was called to do. I was trying to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. The ground is always shaky where want is. Foundational and sure, we're calling it destiny is. And once I got out of desire and got into destiny, it's amazing how firm the ground got. It's, it's amazing how strong and fortified the ground was because it's wow. always shaky when you're in desire. And so the whole book is about God shifting these things that you trust so that he can get you to the place where he can trust you. And let me tell you, when you get to the place where God can trust you, you always win. Because here we are, back to where we started. Because he who has begun the good work in you will establish it until the day of Jesus Christ. So when, when God puts something in you, he's obligated to see that thing to fruition. That's how we this win. This is amazing. Well, guys, did you hear this? What is God shifting in your life? And what is God shaking in your life? Because that's an indication that God is getting ready to take you to your next. What is he shifting in your marriage? What is he shaking in your marriage? What is he shifting in your personal life? What is he shaking? What is he shifting and shaking in your spiritual life? What is he shifting and shaking in your industry, in your field? What is he shifting and shaking around us? And we've had a lot of shifting, a lot yeah. of shaking. And I think this is one way that God is going to get our attention. Those of you that are joining, I want to welcome you. And I want to say a great big thank you to Pastor Keon Henderson. He's speaking my language, or maybe I'm speaking his language. We're both emerging uh, on the emerging scene. And those of you that are tuning in, please don't be fearful. God's got you. All things are working together for good to them that love God. And if you love God, you know, you may not understand all these dots that are all over the place, but one day God is going to connect the dots for you, just like he did with, with Pastor Henderson. We are proud of you. We're excited to be a part of your journey during this time, Pastor Henderson. And, and we welcome you as one of our speakers to end your year strong. Um, we want to end by um, again, telling people how they can get your new book and how they can stay connected to you on social media. And if you'll allow me, I would like to add one, one other shameless plug to it. Number one, you can follow me at Pastor Keon, K-E-I-O-N on Instagram. From there, you can find all of the other conduits because it's the same handle. Um, and so uh, our YouTube channel is Keon Henderson uh, TV, so you can, you can watch us on there. Um, as well. So I'm, I'm super excited about being here. And I, I want to uh, ask that people who register for your conference and know that, that you're going to need another push after that. And I've got something coming up in January uh, called the Cry Out Conference. It's the last weekend of January. Um, and we, we've got the likes of uh, Mike Todd and we've got John Heather and we've got um, um, you know, Chandler Moore from Havoc City Music. We just, it's just, we got Travis Green, so it's going to be crazy. So let's, let's tag team. I want you to go to the Emergence Summit. I want you to end your year strong. Uh, and then I want you to come and see us down here in Houston, Texas at the George R. Brown Center. So, Dr. Trent, thank you so much uh, for having me. I am so proud of what you're doing um, to be a woman. Uh, in this industry and in this ministry, uh, it's and to be powerful and to be unapologetic and to be strong and to be uh, an African American woman, you have just sliced off all of these can boxes and you fill the man with cans and you are an inspiration uh, to black and brown and Latino and um, you know even uh, white women all around the world. Uh, that, that glass ceiling is broken, uh, that commerce uh, is your servant, and uh, you are absolutely amazing. And if you don't hear anybody else tell you in the next 10, 15 days, just put this on repeat and listen to it over and over again. I think you're incredible. Thank you so much. And I feel the same about you as a man of color and as a leader in this world, not just 
a Christian, but as a leader in this world. Thank you so much. Those of you that are just tuning in, we are talking to Pastor Keon Henderson, one of our speakers for End Your Year Strong. You could register at endyourstrong.com. The emergence, the rise of the next generation. This year, we are hosting it at the Marriott Marquis Hotel. And again, go register right now and bring a friend. Don't forget, we do have the Partners Breakfast as well as the Emerging Leaders Luncheon. So as you're registering, make sure you also register for the Emerging Leaders Luncheon. God bless you all. Pastor Henderson, thank you uh, so much. And uh, once again, it's a privilege to host you. God bless. Talking about getting you ahead of the curve and you being like a Noah. 